up everybody this is case study qb back at it again and we are in the progressive war room with christina khalil and is she is running for the new jersey senate seat as a green party candidate she's also a social worker by trade welcome to the show christina Thank you for having me on. Before we start, I just want to let everyone know that later on today at 6 p.m., I'm doing a healing trauma space um, to discuss about it, giving information. It's really psychoeducation slash a support group on Twitter to discuss how we can cope, what are healthy ways we can manage our emotions while our current pol political elected people, I call them failures because everyone's letting us down. Um, are, are causing a lot of trauma and stress within not only the country, but overseas as well. And ever, a lot of people in this country are feeling helpless, overwhelmed, overloaded, and not sure which direction to go in. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was very important for you to mention that at the yeah. top, because definitely as a social worker, who would, who would be a better person to um, conduct that Twitter space? So um, that's, I hope anybody out there who down um, with all the I know I feel down at times going through the Twitter field uh, feed and I'm seeing a, a lot of the carnage going on over in Palestine and even today we learned that since the humanitarian pause ended over 700 people have already died so that, that's just ridiculous I'm, I'm thinking like is this real life like it doesn't yeah. even feel real to me um I know I met you in New Jersey at the reimagining safety documentary screening yeah. And I thought that was so cool. That was when we first uh, connected. And um, I definitely want to ask you, so how is the race going? How is it going so far? It's going good. It would have been easier if it was just me and Menendez, <laughs> you know, maybe one Republican. But now there's a ton of people in the race, and there is a lot of drama in the background when it comes to the primary. So the goal is just let them fight it out amongst each other. And who's ever in the general election, I'm – ready and able to go with them. Now, my biggest hindrance is in the state of New Jersey, they will not let third party or independent candidates engage in debates with primaries, Republican and Democrats, unless you make $750,000. So they put a price stipulation on it. So wait, let me get this right. All we have to do is raise $700,000 for your campaign, not even to give to New Jersey, but for your campaign, and yep. then you're automatically in the debates then i would be allowed to be in the debate would be allowed to debate is there any other st stipulation i'm not i said only yeah. seven hundred thousand like that. yeah like <laughs> but, but I, i'm trying to wait i'm trying to break this down because that's interesting i'm curious is there like do you have to be in polling you know polling at a certain percentage um because that's another thing usually at the national level but go ahead well they won't actually enter me in the polls because i'm a third party mm -hmm. so New Jersey is a giant corrupted machine, and I'm sure you're very well aware of that. Yes, and, it's, and the ballot um, line is corrupt. Yep, yes, and it is one giant um, unopoly, mm -hmm. and they don't work for the people. They work for the corporate donors, and in order to get onto, you know, the the when it comes to um debating the debate stage you have to pretty much say you're going to be a sellout to corporate corporations because that's the only way you're going to make seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. and i say that not to tell people because i understand inflation i'm completely grassroots i i'm just calling it out to encourage viewers like we need to force a debate and we need to say like you know you don't need to have money it's about the best candidate it's not about what's in a person's bank account it, we want grassroots we need people that work for the voters because the republicans have completely given up the democrats have given up and it, and we need people that, that are hungry and striving and want to actually help new jersey residents this country and international policies and actually listen to the voters because if i take corporate donations and every candidate on there that I'm going against is taking corporate donations. There's no way I can work for the people. None of them are ever going to work for the voters. They're only going to work for their corporate interests. Yeah, 100%. I want to give a shout out to Holly Horn that's in the chat right now and the JAMA 93, much love to you. So just to give a rundown on what we're going to be talking about, I want to talk to Christina about her campaign we're going to get into you know this is the progressive war room so we like to talk strategy here get into mm -hmm. the nitty-gritty of things but I also want to ask Christina about uh, how she feels about Cornell West 
entering the Green Party, and then he, when he left, I want to ask her about uh, Jill Stein's campaign. How is she working from that? Um, she's running at the state level. You know, Jill Stein's running at the national level. I'm curious to see how um, they might be working together. Uh, and then also we're going to go into Robert Menendez, you know, who's one of uh, a super corrupt senator, as we can see. Bobby. Uh, we, we see <laughs> Federman called him the senator from Egypt, which is something I definitely agree with. And then um, Tammy's Murphy, which is our mm -hmm. governor, Bill Murphy's wife, yes. is running for Senate as well, along with Christina. So that's that nepotism is creeping. Corruption is kind of, in yep. my opinion, is, is creeping in right there. So those are some of the questions that I'm going to ask Christina about later on. So let's get into the nitty gritty of your campaign. Um, so you have a campaign manager. We yes. talked about that off the camera. Um, your campaign uh, media person, Sean, reached out to me to do this interview, which I was more than happy to support my pro fellow progressives and leftists. So I'm always down to do that. Um, so let me know. Talk to me about your infrastructure. And is this from the point of view of I want other people out there who are watching this to understand that this is not some fall off fantasy thing that only um, people that are connected can do it's going to be tougher but grassroots need um grassroots candidates need to run for office and i want to demystify that how that looks by asking a fellow um not super rich um but a grassroots candidate person how she's doing in her race so go ahead christina yes okay just to give like a little background so i grew up in foster care and i'm also a first generation so like i don't come from money and everything i do is 100 percent on my own um, so I work two jobs. I live paycheck to paycheck, but I'm in a, a spot in my life where I was just like, okay, I feel secure. I feel stable. And now I have the ability to give that back to other people. Cause I've studied pol uh, policies. I've studied politics. I've written grants. I've managed grants. I've written policies for different um, businesses. So I understand the, um, the, what goes into it. And I have the fight and I have the passion. So it is, hard. I actually started in November of 2022. Um, and it's meeting people, canvassing, phone calls, um, text banking, um, and meeting with different organizations. And the challenges that that I face is, you know, I started as a Democrat running and I feel I have to highlight that every time I, I do run. I mean, I do speak because a lot of people will look it up and be like, why'd you switch to third party? It, when I was running as under a Democrat, a progressive Democrat, it came to that they push out all progressive Dems. There was no shot that I would have actually been able to, to win the primaries. And then on top of that, meeting with certain Democrat established leaders, they said to me that no matter, they love the policies, but they're not moving in a progressive way. And they are going to be moving, they're going to be supporting Menendez, even though he's going to be looking at his second federal trial. So there, they just told me straight to my face. So I was, at, what, and I respect it, because I'm just like, you know what, I rather like, no, none of you guys are ever going to support me, then and you're never going to support progressive values or progressive leaders than to just waste my time. So I was, uh, and I spoke, and I remember meeting with Green Party and speaking a little bit. And then I, I was speaking to another Green Party member and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to do this race as a Democrat anymore. I, I don't feel um, confident or comfortable within the party. And it's clearly not for the people. I'm never going to be able to help people, even if I do move forward, if by miracle, like I'm going to have to make crazy deals that goes against my ethics and my morals. And then she explained to me, she was like, why don't you look, seek the nomination with the Green Party? We do have a Green Party established team in New Jersey. And I wound up going down that road. So it we we've been canvassing, we've been phone banking, and it's just a challenge, Be especially when it comes to organizations that support progressive leaders. It's they're too nervous to step away from the duopoly and endorse a third party. Be and, and I get it because they're just like, if, you know, you lose, um, they're going to hold a grudge against me. They might take away money from from my you know facility, from my company, from my nonprofit, and they're they're more afraid of consequences than they are standing for what's right. Which you know I get it because you guys are doing what you can to help, but instead of looking at lose, 
let's look at what if I win. And the only way to win is if we get the communities together, if we get people together. And right now I'm working in, working on it in different towns with different members. And we're going to, and it's a slow, very slow progression, but the goal is to actually win this in 2024. And we're working on getting 12 congressional candidates with the pre presidential candidate at the top and actually doing, um, we're gonna be the green 13 in New Jersey. Okay, that sounds <laughs> yeah. so good. Strategies coming together, you guys, it yeah. sounds like you're planning. Let me let me ask you this question. What does your campaign need to be success, successful? Um, volunteers, people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you can donate, donate, but I'm, I understand inflation. I understand everyone's grassroots. Um, I mean, um, struggling with inflation, but volunteers spreading the message and just letting people know like, Hey, no more. We're not doing this anymore because our elected officials have abandoned us. We ask for affordable housing, they refuse to do that. We ask for clean water and food with no chemicals, they refuse to do that. We ask for full funding in public school, they refuse to do that. We ask for a ceasefire, they refuse to do that. They make it clear they will never work for us because they are more interested in lining their pockets. So in order to make the change, we all have to come together because this isn't just my campaign, this is your campaign. And you guys come to office with me. I may be the face, but every voter is coming to that Senate seat with me. 100%. So yeah. just to, to let everyone uh, know that the website is KhalilForSenate.com. And that's spelled K-H-A-L-I-L for Senate.com. Uh, so uh, you said you need volunteers. Can I ask how, how many volunteers do you have currently? Or do you have a volunteer coordinator? I'm just curious. Yes. Um, we have a handful right now. We, I did receive some emails. So we're, we have to do the vetting process. So right okay. now it's just a handful. It's a small team plus the Green Party of New Jersey. So we got to go. We, we have a good amount, but to take on the Senate, we need the entire, <laughs> as many people within the state. Yeah. So there's a get involved uh, tab here that you can fill out. And we would mm -hmm. love as many people as possible. And this is also to build the infrastructure in New Jersey so that even if, um, hopefully Christine is successful, but even if she's not, we can start building for the next year. And that's one of the, mm -hmm. something that I don't think is mentioned enough that we need to compound upon and, and build this political power. We see the unions are build it, building this political power. And I, I'm so excited about the, far-reaching goal of a general strike in 2028 that Sean Fain talked about recently that he's trying to see if he can coordinate all the other unions to have their contracts um, and at the same time in 2028 or around the same time mm -hmm. so that they can then demand more in a more collective way. So this is the type of uh, power infrastructure that we want to build starting now, like just start it as early as possible and slowly build up until we get to that point. All right. And then so th I'm sorry to cut you off, but we sure. don't even have to wait to 2028. We could actually start doing it now. Okay. We can do all we need is 25% of this country to be on strike. And then that's it. They have to answer to us because everything's going to crumble. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that type of infrastructure though, is not, is from, from what I we've seen is not, yeah. it's never happened in America period. So yeah. we got to find some way to get everybody on board, whether you're on the right or the left, because that's the most important thing that you can't just have leftists doing a general strike. We need to have a coalition yes. of people on the right side or who would vote Republican and say, hey, if you want to get corruption out, if you want to raise power with the, our class, we have to work together along class lines because that's where you get more people yep. involved all right so the, and the i've even one. spoken so, to some republican voters and they've said that they'll switch over and vote for me because oh, nice. it's about unity and it's about holding people accountable yeah. and it, it's they and believe it or not like a lot of republican voters really want progressive policies yeah. when, that discussing it with them I, I and saying okay this is i always thought that the door would slam in my face because i was just like let me just go for the gusto and see what happens. And everyone's like, no, I agree with you. I do, but I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I'm here to do it for you. 100%. These are some of the people that 
uh, Christina is running against. So Bob Menendez, who's the current corrupt senator of New Jersey, Lawrence Ham ran last time. He was also involved with the Bernie Sanders campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I think the establishment candidate in, in New Jersey outside of Men- Bob Menendez is Andrew Kim, from what I understand. But our governor is running his wife, or his wife is running as well, Tammy Murphy. That's Phil Murphy's uh, wife is running as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. And here's Christina here. So I have a video that I want to play just to cut up the, um, and I, I know we've been talking for a little while. So I'm going to play this video that I'm going to post later on my Twitter page. So you guys are getting a quick exclusive. So I'm going to play this right now. Democrats and Republicans are looking ahead to ways that their parties can garner more votes. But they're also looking back at lessons learned from some closely followed legislative races. Dr. Benjamin Dworkin is the director of the Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship. And he joins us now with a focus on New Jersey. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jen. Thanks for having me on. Of course, with Dr. Dworkin, uh, we talk often about legislative matters, elections. We were just talking about that with regard to New Jersey. You do analysis and research when it comes to that busy election season right now. Let's start with that news that New Jersey First Lady Tammy Murphy is running for a Senate seat in the primary uh, next year in June. She will face Congressman Andy Kim representing the third congressional district there. What are your thoughts on this as uh, this is an interesting race that is gearing up. Sure, it's going to be very interesting. First of all, we have to understand that Bob Menendez has not uh, left office and in theory could still file in the the beginning of March 2024 to run himself. So we could have a three person uh, race here. But Tammy Murphy, uh, the spouse of our sitting governor, who's going to remain governor for the next two years. I just want to um show real quick how they just said oh it's just going to be a three race you guys saw that i just showed that there's a ton of people here running right let me see if i can show real quick but okay he's not coming up maybe because the video but there's a ton of people here running and they're focused on those three so this is how that manufacturing consent works Mm -hmm. that they don't even acknowledge the other people potentially running in the race what you think about that christina Oh, I'm not surprised because they don't acknowledge. But I will say because of those three heavy hitters, Mm -hmm. that it's literally a battle of corruption. Because Tammy, Andy Kim is not grassroots. He gets, and that's, and it bothers me that he lies to to his constituents. He's getting packed donations. He's gotten mega donors like uh, Sam Bankman fried to donate to his campaign. And he, yep. And it's on record and I've posted screenshots of it and called him out and he just ignores it. So every one of those three are heavy hitters and it's going to be one of those three that are going to wind up in the primary and I'm going to be going against them. And it's not to knock the other um, Democrats running, but I we've never seen such a, a dog fight. And when it came to the U.S. Senate, because if you're looking back, at least when it comes to the U.S. Senate, it would be like one or two people that you don't really know. And they're they're trying to verse Menendez and then they get knocked off. But it's literally the, the Democratic Party has shifted and they're already picking their people. Not only that, we do have Republican voters switching that they're starting their own um, that the, they've been talking about. They're starting their own little campaign to switch two Democrats in the primary to vote for Menendez and then switch back to Republicans to vote for a Republican member. Wow. So so I have no idea how it's going to go. It's just a very, watching the drama is very interesting, but all three candidates will not call for a ceasefire. They do not listen to their voters. They all support um, police brutality, Cop City. None of them actually care. They are not interested in ending the, the war on drugs. They're not interested in, in universal health care. They're Even though they speak on it, their actions has, have always been the opposite. Um, and I'm, it, it's just exhausting. Yeah, to, Tammy Baldwin also used to work for Goldman Sachs. So she's yeah. definitely not going to be a progressive champion at no. all if she gets elected into I'm, office. She she kicked out the one woman that needed her, um, the one, she was a working woman and she worked for the state police, I think, 
but she needed a room. She was postpartum, needed a room to pump. And Tammy Murphy said she's not allowed to pump because it's tacky. And that was a newspaper. We don't need people that are against women and children, especially moms that are working that are postpartum. And now she's saying she made a tweet, which was very interesting. Um, and she was like, we need a leader that cares about black and brown children. I'm just like, so you're, you're telling me that you never cared. Your husband never cared. Nobody cares until you get into office. So you're saying that there is not one elected official currently that cares. But then the second issue is what about their parents that are unsafe? What about the black and brown parents that go out in the community and they become hashtags? We need to th protect the entire family. We don't just need to protect the kids we want the entire family to remain together and we need everybody to be safe yeah 100 percent. let's continue the video um has thrown her hat into the ring she certainly has organizational uh a lead in organizational support and a lead in financial support there are uh, some concerns i think among democratic activists um this was just uh, sort of too cute by half, a little bit uh, too much of an insider, uh, self-dealing kind of situation. But Tammy Murphy is a qualified person. She's made maternal health her major issue over the last few years. Um, and I think she'll have to go out and prove herself to the voters, to Democratic voters in a primary, that she's a legit candidate. Yeah, and let's now switch gears a little bit talking about the uh, legislative districts in New Jersey. Uh, all 120 mm -hmm. seats in the legislature were up for grabs right, there. I'm gonna pause the video here. If we want to go, if we still have time, we can probably go back to it. I want to continue uh, interviewing Christina. So I want to ask you, Christina, what? how did you feel about Cornell West joining the Green Party race and then leaving the Green Party? I thought it was good, but there were some concerns within the party about him because he he's um, a famous person, <laughs> a celebrity, and they didn't really know the direction it was going to go in. And he was just looking for an endorsement, but the requirements that were needed to obtain that endorsement, especially on a presidential candidate level, he wasn't really interested in, in doing the work that was needed. But And it's not a knock against him, um, he wanted to just run the campaign the way he wanted to run the campaign. So it just wasn't working out because we want to build infrastructure. We want to build a party and we want to build a, a group of progressive leaders that are actually going to change this entire country. Yeah, 1,000%. Um, so Jill Stein took the place of basically running for um, the, the president of the yes. Green Party. How... how is she um, coordinating? How she's doing so far? That's the first question I want to ask. And then also, how is she going to coordinate with you? Or do you have any plans to coordinate with her? In the so right now, she's just looking for the nomination. And there are people that are working for different presidential candidates. It was more of a last minute thing because she wanted to build Cornell up and she wanted to really help him. So I have to commend her that she filled in big shoes or she's trying to fill in big shoes and the goal is to get people to support her in the nomination um but for new jersey my main focus is building the 12 congressional candidates and really remaining focused on new jersey and flipping the entire state green and it doesn't matter if you register as a republican or democrat if you want change this is the way to do it and this is the way to hold our elected uh, uh, elected officials accountable because they think that they could do whatever they want. Well, they know they could do whatever they want. They know they could get away with it and nobody ever does anything Whether it's uh, they're They're just like, Oh, it's empty threats. If you're going to replace me and vote me out, but you always, I always get my seat back. So it's time to, to show with action. You're going to be held accountable. And then I will be helping whoever the, the nominee, whoever receives the nomination and saying, okay, we will have a, pre a presidential candidate and hopefully get them to do maybe one or two events in New Jersey. But the focus is really going to be the infrastructure and what we can do for New Jersey and how we can change and help New Jersey and really get the corruption out. Because, you know, with Tammy Murphy, she didn't work for anything. And her focusing on the maternal um, development and the maternal health 
um, the or, a lot of members of those organizations came out and said she just sat there in the meeting. She never came up with solutions and she's taking credit and people have dropped articles and called her out on her corruption. So yeah, we don't need leaders that are going to lie and we don't need people that, that don't work for endorsements that are just handed it because of backroom deals. We need people that are just, that are upfront and I'm going to work hard. I'm going to, I want to earn the trust of the voters. I want to maintain the trust and I want to actually make changes. Yeah, I was the first thing I thought of when I saw that on her website as well is that that's such a safe like kind of um, topic to try to galvanize and to campaign on. Like, there's people hurting here. There's, there's people in New Jersey. We have homelessness. We have mm -hmm. a lot of um, issues where people are in very in survival mode. Yep. And not to say that um, maternal what she's advocating for is not. Um, something that needs to be advocated for, but I think that we have a lot more serious issues. We have the, are you for ceasefire or are you not? Or we we need you to be for ceasefire mm -hmm. in Palestine as because we want, we're humanitarians. We, mm -hmm. we don't want people to just die needlessly. Um, and we so, also don't want to put our country at risk because right now yeah. what they're doing is not just colonizing, we're pissing off the entire world mm -hmm. and we're being put at risk for a revenge attack. And that's on the entire administration if any of us get hurt because of them. And they're so quick to discount accountability. And even when it comes to maternal health, that's just a band-aid on the issue. You got to get to the core root. We need affordable housing. We need clean water. We need clean food. We need to make sure no one's being charged for giving birth. We need to make sure that we have a whole bunch of safety in place. What if there's domestic violence involved? What if the kid needs disability? What if the parents need, you know, AIDS involved to help take care of their, their child with a disability? Proper time off you know, for mothers and fathers that just had a newborn, how does this, like, we got to get to the core root. So if you can't just say you're for maternal health and then just only be pro, pro birth and then say, I don't care about the family afterwards, because in this, it, not just the state of New Jersey, we already know that CPS targets black and brown families. So this is a countrywide issue. So if you can't afford housing, and they don't, CPS doesn't come. No one comes and says, let me get you back on your feet. They come and remove your child and say, in order for you to get your kid back, you have to meet our demands. So why are we, why, why would we want to elect someone or support someone that has never shown any progress toward the core root? And she's already had her time. So if she's saying she's going to do these things now, we know it's a bold faced lie. 100%. So since we're talking about policy here, tell us what's your top policy and some of the things that you're going to be advocating for if you get elected. Okay. So I'm going to be advocating for amending the 13th Amendment. We're going to be cleaning the entire water system in the entire country. I'm going to be redesigning immigration, ending mass incarceration, ending the war on drugs, and really focusing on police brutality. And before anyone saying, oh, police, police, police brutality impact the police. The, what's happening in the communities is designed by the politicians. So it's the politicians' fault that you have officers that are overworked, struggling with addiction, because I've worked with first responders as well, struggling with mental health. In New Jersey, they passed a bill that says officers with PTSD are allowed to work. It's frowned upon for them to get any sort of mental health treatment or to leave for a period of time in order to, to obtain mental health treatment. And then you got these these people that are working in the community and then when at when when it preventable deaths because all these deaths are preventable occur no politician raises their hand they dismiss it they hung they hang uh, the the entire department out to dry they hang the community out to dry and they keep that that fighting going when we need to work and realize it's we need to unite and go after the politicians creating this this unjust environment. No, one hundred percent. Well, we already got people. Jajaman said Christina needs to be on stage. Let me put this up. Needs to be on the debate stage. So guess what, Jajaman? We only need to raise seven hundred k. That's it. That's yes, all. I wish. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So they put the stipulation on me saying that I have to raise $750,000, actually put on the entire Green Party in order to be part of the Senate debate. And I'm not asking people to just donate their entire paycheck because during these, these times, it's impossible. So that's light work, New Jersey, let's get it. <laughs> 
But I'm asking the community, let's band together. Let's force the debate. Let's force their hand and call out the unjust because you don't need to be rich. Like I live paycheck to paycheck. So I understand the struggle and donations are great because I do want donations. I want to go to every single um, county in New Jersey. I want to be able to give out information. I want to speak to to people that have lost hope. I want to speak to communities that have been feeling pain because of these poor policies. I want to, to meet people in person. So the donations help because me, I work two jobs. Like living paycheck to paycheck, everything's going to bills. <laughs> and, then, and then even like with the inflation, sometimes I'm even budgeting where I'm just like, okay, I got one meal today. So I understand what's happening to everyone in New Jersey. So if we could at least force the debate or if someone, uh, and you don't even have to like donate money. If you have a space in the town where you're just like, hey, I can let you use this space for free where, you know, we can get some materials or we could get some people and we could do a town hall. You can let me use this space for free. So there are more, there's more than one way to actually donate to and help with the campaign. Sure, sure. We have to be creative yes. as grassroots candidates um, running in an unconventional way. So whatever that is, like you just said, um, people volunteering their space um, to do town halls, um, various other ways. So I want to show this uh, tab here. I want to break down some strategy with my fellow political junkies. So here is uh, the Wikipedia of the last Senate race. And this was between um, that the one that Cory Booker won, I believe in Oh, this is 2020. Yeah, 2020. So we saw in this is just the Democratic primary that Cory Booker got 838,000 um, votes. Now, Lawrence Ham, who I mentioned before, he was the Bernie candidate because he, he was the, like the New Jersey um, director for Bernie's campaign. But uh, for a time and, and he also ran, he got 118,000. So now the, the most important stat and number, though, is the general election, because especially Christina is running as a Green Party. So in the general election, Cory Booker got 2.5 million, approximately. And then the Republican got 1.8 million. And then at the time, the Green Party candidate, candidate got 38,000. So basically, we need to get around maybe uh, 2.5 million or more like like christina you said before like just you just need to get that number plus one yeah to win right <laughs> so let's let's aim we need to figure out how can we get and strategize to get 2.5 million votes in new jersey and that means definitely a strong volunteer base mm -hmm. get the word out to canvas do you plan to canvas i've already started canvassing and it's mm -hmm. just um we, uh, I'm rotating with a few people, but it's usually just like me and another person. Um, so, and that's why I'm, uh, we're also strategizing town halls and in-person town halls. Cause I'm just like, maybe we can knock out a lot of canvassing and I'm trying to do events and I'm working with different, um, leadership in different towns that, that on their time, I've given them information. They're very interested in the campaign and they, they want to to help so on their time on their podcast they're going to be speaking up about my campaign and then you know then as time goes on they'll be bringing me in but they're going to be speaking up on their own so everyone's volunteering in very different ways so we're yeah. using social media a lot in person but more volunteers for in person would be very helpful yeah 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 definitely um so definitely check out her website she has a volunteers page Cause I'm thinking like, if I was strategizing, like if I was your campaign manager, I would break it down. Like, okay, 2.5 million votes. That means we need to, I, I like to go by the power of tens, right? So, mm -hmm. which means like, you need to reach 20 million people just mm -hmm. to get to that 2 million votes, mm -hmm. you know, approximately give or take. So in that, if that's the case, we want to reach 20 million people. We need to get a ton of volunteers every mm -hmm. week they need to be canvassing like a thousand households mm -hmm. a week, you know and, and and then you calculate okay when is the general election okay so we got from to this we're in december now to next year november um fourth or whatever you know whatever tuesday falls on and we okay let's split it up into weeks 
mm-hmm. right how can we get every week we need to be hitting this amount of households and having time see the, these are the type of um things i know i would strategize now i'm not a professional i haven't even been in that world but um maybe you can even enlighten me on uh if you did this already or if you're planning like what's the it, well, take us in your campaign meeting real quick and, and let us know how you're strategizing so we're working it was broken up into different counties and the counties that really need to be hit targeted that have the more most progressive people in and then after we hit the progressive um uh, towns and the progressive counties then moving forward to other counties because i do want to reach out to everybody um and it doesn't matter if you're republican or democrat because even from my experience i've met such progressive republicans they just don't know what to do and they already know democrats lie to them so they're just like i can't vote blue because this is the same mess that i'm going to get anyway or they um so they're willing to actually switch over just meeting a new leader that actually wants to make changes and the best part is being voted um being voted green and being elected as a green if they can't they can give me attitude but i can't be forced to to join their charades of games whereas like aoc came in and she was just like you know um she said nancy pelosi made her her career a living you know nightmare and then when Nancy left, she realized it was Nancy. But as we see with the squad, you we need people outside the party to come in to motivate people to to towards progressive changes because the squad can't vote against the establishment. There are consequences for that. And whatever fear that they have, they're too scared to vote against the establishment that they're always voting on policies that hurt us, but it, it benefits the establishment. So then getting me in, it's like, I'm not worried about, I already have a history. If I have to like eat alone for lunch, I'm completely fine eating alone for lunch. You know what I mean? Like if everyone yeah. wants to be mean, okay, act yeah. out, but I'm always going to be able to vote for the people. And I will always call out the establishment because it does look really bad. It was t- um, the recent bill that that passed, especially when it comes to the language being used and it, it, they, they can, if they really cared about us, they could put bills together and they could make it fast because anytime there's a problem with Israel, they are always moving an emergency bill to make sure really fast, they will not do that for this country. And we vote them in to represent us. So it, it we need third parties in there because that's how we're going to break it up, break up the duopoly, challenge the establishment and say no more. 100%. I know that's one of the disappointing things that I uh, watch uh, Brianna Joy Gray and um, why am I drawing a blank right now? Ryan Grimm. Mm-hmm. He's coming out with his new book on the squad and they were talking about how when the Justice Democrats candidates and the squad got into mm-hmm. office and even when the new waves came in, they ne- didn't necessarily said, hey, let's come together. Let's strategize together. Let's start holding our vote together. Let's start making demands together because mm-hmm. the more people you have, the more power you can galvanize as we can see from mm-hmm. the far right, you know, the um, Matt Gates wing of the Republican party. Yep. He got a lot of concessions by holding his vote. But uh, I, I was so disappointed when I heard that, that they didn't even have that. Like, that's the whole point. What's the point of getting into office? But we see, it seems like they're out for themselves. They're yep. out for their own careers. They're out to make sure that they have longevity. Every so often, we do see them show solidarity with each other, but we but need to have consistency. Permission. Yeah. Go but ahead, only, Christina. Only with permission, if they're allowed to, mm-hmm. if they're not going to have any consequences for that. Yeah, so yeah. It, it it's the the corruption is just so deep, and it it speaks volumes when it was one Republican that voted no on that bill for for just the language and. I, he's not a progressive person at all, and yet people are now praising him. It it was a Republican that that cares about the people. It was the uh, I'm like reading tweets. It was a Republican that that cares about um, Palestine. It was one Republican, so he just guaranteed himself progressive votes in 2024. And then you have MTG, who's you know not progressive in any way, and she voted no on sending 14 billion to israel and came out with a statement that we we know who she is by nature and she said i'm not going to risk this country israel can take care of themselves this fund this funding needs to go to the the people in america we have issues at home and then it, it was just 
astonishing to see the response like, oh, you're on the right side of history. And the squad couldn't even do that. Like they made the squad look so bad. And it's just like, we need third party because I, I don't want another Republican and we definitely cannot survive another Biden. We can't. The duopoly and even the people that could potentially replace Biden, they're so corrupted themselves. It's just, it's what are we getting? Because they're both, it's like they, they both are now in competition and say, I'm going to be the worst president. Like, I'll, I'll be worse than you. We're going to be the worst party and we're still going to get people to love us. Like, it, it's like, what the, shouldn't be the competition that, okay, let's save more lives. Let's be the best country on earth. Let's not make enemies internationally. Let's make, Let's help people. Let's let's heal our communities. Let's fix us up because we have people in this country that have family overseas where we have um, we have blockades on them. Where like we have sanctions. sanctions. Yeah, we have yeah. sanctions, and we not only that. Like even in Palestine, like the imam in New Jersey, I think it was fourteen or fifteen. He saw them die on TV. And then Murphy and Tammy, they hold a vigil for Israel. And then they're just like, oh, I'm sorry. And he's just, he said, and there was a newspaper article that I want more than, than just sorry. I want a ceasefire. They still refuse to call it, but they want to make sure that they get the Muslim votes. When yeah, Ramadan yeah. comes, we want you for our photo ops. So yeah. it's also where where it's like voicing to, to the, the Muslim community. It's like you guys have more than just Republicans. You have a lot more than the the democrats you don't need to have a genocide or to fear for your life or to 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 have to worry is there going to be a ban or a gen like you don't have we could be progressive we can actually stop this that's actually a great idea that you brought up uh, that's something to look into i don't know if you've already looked into it or not but definitely um the muslim community reaching out to them to see if you can get their endorsement and you can say hey Yes. I am an avenue that I am calling for a ceasefire that you, I can be your voice and, and in this uh, political sphere in the Senate. Yes, I have reached out and they're nervous mm -hmm. to like, it, it's just what else do you have to lose at this point? Exactly. Yeah. And on top of that, I've worked with, with the Muslim community for a long time and I've spoken about how we need Islamic based rehabilitation centers, um, better schooling. Um, better uh, just protection overall and it it's it, they're very interested it's just they and again like they don't know how to to move forward but it's like I give the education so you know we could do this because like working with with the Muslim community that's in recovery it's hard but I have been able to to intertwine the the Quran into that but it's also educating the community members like you know everyone struggles with addiction you know but that's a whole other different story but there is more paths down the road that I I have been interested in I am interested in helping so as we wrap up right now I want you to remind the people about your Twitter space today yes. and I'm going to show your website as you uh talk about that and we want anybody who is in new jersey to please go to the website please help um volunteer if you can uh send a couple coins her way we're trying to get 700k only 700k guys. <laughs> only 700k <laughs> guarantee her on the debate stage along with whoever is the primary nominee for the democrats and the republicans only 700k yeah. <laughs> i'm saying that and if person. anyone could like hashtag john stewart we're trying to get him involved because we're progressive he's he needs to lead the Dems and come to us. Yeah, 100%. Let me give a quick shout out also to the chat. Uh, Janice Anderson, much love to you. Thank you for coming by. John Kemper, much love to you. Uh, Holly Horn was in the building. The Gemma 93. Christopher was in the building. Much love to everybody oh, and everyone else in the chat. Janice? We do oh. have, we will be having Greens running for every single seat in New Jersey. Oh, I'm glad you read that. I didn't. I apologize, Janice. I didn't see that um, question, and I'm glad that Christina was able to answer it for you. We're going to be the Green Thirteen. We're just working on our vetting process, and our vetting process is uh, very, you know, in detail because we need to make sure we have the right people on board, and we need to make sure um, that we don't have, you know, people that are in it for the wrong reasons. And feel free if you feel like, you know, you're interested in making change with the interviews and the vettings happening, feel free to throw your name in the hat because mm -hmm. we have people that are interested and we're just meeting people and trying to determine like, 
you know, the pros and cons and explain to them what the process is really going to take. Are they really up for the process? 100%. And tell us about, uh, one more time about your Twitter space. Oh, yeah. Um, it is today at 6 p.m. It's going to be a trauma because um, I've worked in a lot of trauma throughout my, my years. Um, and it's going to be talking about trauma and the feelings of helplessness and healthy coping skills in a very safe place to discuss. You know, we are being let down and ignored by the people we voted in. And how do we move forward from that? Could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us spending time. Thank you so much, Christina, Khalil, for coming and for running. Thank you for stepping up and running for office as a progressive. That's what's needed. And give you much love to everybody else in the chat. And we wish you not to only hear you from you. Oh, and I hope to hear from you more in the future. All right, everyone, have a great one. Thank you for spending time this Sunday. Adios. Thank you. Thank you.